Hey guys, how's it going? So as some of you may know, I am working part-time as a systems administrator at a Canadian university where I have to manage a lab of some 40 some odd computers, uh, each of them running some flavor of Red Hat based Linux. One of the common problems that system admins run into is the question of how do I manage 40 some computers at the same time, right? I make one configuration change, do I have to actually walk around to every single computer and make that change everywhere else? Well. Luckily, that problem has been addressed by uh, quite a few people in the past, and today I'm going to be showing you one of my favorites, uh, which is called Puppet. Uh, so while some configuration management systems, they require you to set up a master which is going to push updates to machines, which I personally believe is a bit of an unreliable method, instead you have Puppet, and Puppet is a pull from the server configuration manager. So you set up a Puppet master, this, this master knows what the configuration is supposed to be, and when one of the clients pings the master uh, over the network, then Puppet runs, it sends a configuration down to the client, and the client can basically set it up, set itself up so that it's uh, consistent with what the master says it should be. I won't bore you with the details. There's a lot of interesting DevOps applications and security discussions that you'll find all over the place. But in this video, what we're going to be looking at is just a very basic configuration. And uh, we're going to also wrap this uh, video up by uh, by writing a very simple, uh, a simple module uh, for Puppet. So let's get started with this. So here I have two instances of Alma Linux running in virtual machines. I really like virtual machines because uh, I can have a backup copy of the entire system image. And if I mess something up, I can just roll it back to that, which I had to do three times during this tutorial. But we'll save that discussion for another time. The only difference between these two virtual machines that we have here is one of them is named Master and the other is named Puppet. And other than that, they have two different IP addresses. Uh, they're both on the same network and they're basically the exact same image. I just copied it from uh, from one place to another. Uh, what I'm going to be doing here first is I'm going to be modifying the etsy hosts file uh, on both of the machines so that they have each other in the hosts file so that they know how to talk to one another. And uh, now that we know who we're talking to, we'll be adding the Puppet Labs repository, which will allow us to install the Puppet agent and the server. Uh, once we install the repository, we'll search for Puppet. That'll allow us to refresh all of our repositories. And then on the server, we're going to install Puppet Server, whereas on the agent, we're going to be installing Puppet Agent. Uh, now I'm running these in parallel. You don't technically have to, but uh, this is just faster for me since I have them both up anyway. Uh, this will ask you to import some keys. Uh, generally, you should check that these GPG keys are correct. In my case, I know that they are, so I'm just gonna click Y. And uh, once that's all installed, you'll find uh, the binaries for Puppet in your opt Puppet Labs bin directory. Uh, starting with the server here, we're going to add a couple of configuration options. We're going to add DNS alt names. That tells the server basically what its own alternate names are. As well, we're going to add a server option so that the server knows how to contact itself. Uh, one additional change that I'm going to make here that you probably won't have to worry about. Uh, by default, this is going to allocate uh, two gigabytes of RAM for your Java stack. And this machine only has two gigabytes of RAM, so I'm going to get a, an out of memory error. So you probably won't have to do this, but I'm going to reduce these down to one gigabyte. And uh, finally, uh, the other thing you'll want to do is open up port 8140 TCP on your firewall. Uh, most Red Hat systems have uh, firewall automatically installed, so we're just going to quickly use firewall CMD. We're going to add 8140, and then we're going to restart firewall daemon uh, in order for that change to take effect. Now moving over to the puppet or the agent, we're going to add the same server option that we have on the master. Uh, so we're going to add the puppet master on our on our uh, agent here. And that'll add the server option. Uh, once that's running, we uh, we also want to verify that we can connect to the uh, the puppet master. Uh, what, what, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to install Telnet. Uh, that really should have been installed before uh, because Telnet is a really useful, uh, useful utility here. And we're just going to Telnet to port 8140 on the master. And uh, yeah, as we can see, it connects. So that tells us that there's something running on that port and we can communicate with it. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pair the master and the agent. And what we're going to do here is we're going to run a puppet agent test. 
uh, the agent test will fail because the certificate isn't signed yet. But if we pop over to the master and we list all certificates, we see that we have puppet.home certificate, which is not yet signed. So that's from our, uh, that's from our puppet agent that we just sent over there. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll sign it with CA sign cert name puppet.home. And uh, now that it's signed, we can pop back over to our agent here and uh, run the puppet test again. And as we can see, it's contacting the server and there's no errors. It's applied in 0.28 seconds. Looks like everything is working. Now we can enable the services and that's basically that. We now have a working Puppet install and it is working, but we can't quite see that it's working because there is no configuration changes to be applied right now. So we're going to get started here writing our very own uh, Puppet module here and uh, we're going to call it uh, user. So we'll, we'll pop over to the environments uh, production folder here. Uh, so this is under Etsy Puppet Labs code environments production. Uh, we're going to be adding users to the uh, module folder and uh, we're going to be using this to add new user to our puppet agents. So we drop into the Etsy Puppet Labs code environments production and we'll be going into the modules directory. We create users for a module that is going to be named users and it is important to get these names consistent because if the name of the folder does not match the class that you are creating in the module, it will fail. For now, we're going to be creating manifests, files, templates, and examples, although depending on your specific use case, you might add uh, other directories as well. The manifests directory needs to hold an init.pp file. Uh, this will be our initialization for the module. And uh, in this, uh, we'll also be adding a groups class within this also. We'll look at that in a moment. But uh, we'll be writing this, this uh, class to create a user called new user with a home directory. We're going to define the shell. We'll, uh, we'll tell it which group ID, which is going to be defined in the groups class file. And uh, finally, we're going to add a password. Um, you could do plain text, I suppose, but what we're going to do here, we're going to use OpenSSL to encrypt the password. Uh, I've just typed in the password as 123123, and we're going to, uh, we're going to add the password hash uh, into our initialization. Uh, initialization file. As a final step, um, so we also need to create the groups class file. Uh, this is a really simple file. It just basically says we need to have a group by that group name that we want to add our user to. So we're adding the puppet users group and we need to make sure that that's also in our init.pp file. We need to include it and uh, we also need to remember to close our brackets here. Apparently I forgot that earlier. And as a final step, we're going to hop over to the examples directory and create an init.pp file, uh, which just includes our user class. And uh, when we apply this, we can apply it with uh, the command written here. Uh, this basically just compiles our module and attempts to run it. And if it runs successfully, we should be able to ID new user. And we'll see that our master now has new user created on it. So we can verify that this works since it has modified the master. However, it has not modified the agent. For that, we need to create a script in our manifest. We're going into manifests and we're going to add a new script. Uh, this one is going to be defined for the default node. The default node means basically it goes to everyone. And all we need to do here is include the users module. So we can force, so now that we've done that, we save it. We can go over to our puppet agent and we're going to force it to update with puppet agent dash T. Um, this basically, we don't have to do this because if we start the puppet, uh, if we start the puppet system D uh, daemon, it will automatically update over time. But since this, uh, we want to see this happen in real time, I'm going to run puppet agent dash T and we can see that it's applied to the new user and, uh, and sign in as the new user. And we see that we have uh, the new user installed on our, our puppet agent without ever having to have run a, uh, a new user script. And if we had done this using our system D file, then we would never have had to do anything on this machine at all. It would have just automatically applied once the uh, system D file triggered. So this was a pretty long example and we haven't really accomplished a lot, but what we want to highlight here is that if I had 40 other puppet agents that I had to run this on and they all have the puppet, uh, they all have the puppet agent installed and running, then I wouldn't have to touch any of those machines. Within the next half hour, they would all have new user set up on it with the password, with the home directory, and everything would be just fine.
So especially if you have a lot of packages that need to be managed, or if you have a very complex environment that needs to be the same on 40 some machines, this is way more efficient than having to walk to every single machine. And it's even still more efficient than having to SSH to every single machine to run the same command over and over and over again. So once you learn how to do the configurations, you're pretty much good to go. This is a significantly efficient system. And honestly, I cannot recommend Puppet enough if you have a large number of systems that you have to configure. And they don't have to be the same operating system. You could have a Debian-based system. You could have an Arch-based system. You could even have it running on Windows. And it will attempt to apply uh, the exact same... Uh, it'll attempt to apply the, the exact same uh, modules... Uh, if it's able to. And if it's not able to, then uh, it will report uh, the errors to the Puppet database, but we don't have that installed yet. That's for another video. If you want to see that, feel free to like and subscribe. We'll see you around, and uh, hopefully next time we'll be taking a look at the Puppet Labs database, or Puppet DB. So stay tuned, and have a great day.